With the Battle of the Bulge release for Flames of War, I thought it would be a good time to show you how to paint your US tanks in a winter camouflage, and I'll be using this M18 Hellcat to do so. As you can see, this model has already been assembled and primed, and I chose white for this. I used an airbrush primer for this, but how you apply it isn't important, only the color. So feel free to brush on or aerosol spray your primer instead. Just make sure that you use a white primer. The reason for this white primer is, of course, for the whitewashing effect. Many people like to apply their white layer over a regular olive drab base coat using chipping and other more specialized methods to create a weathered and ragged look. However, I find that starting with the white and working your way backwards is also a solid approach too. I began by creating a kind of wash by heavily watering down some US olive drab with some regular water. This was then applied over the entirety of the tank. This created a very subtle green hue to the tank surface, which, once dried, resulted in the appearance of a fading whitewash that was still showing some of the original green beneath it. You can layer this wash up too, applying it more heavily in places you'd expect the whitewash to have not been applied at all or have to have been worn away. This includes the insides of the turret and around the road wheels and bogies. While the wash of olive drab had gone a long way to create that worn effect, I still wanted some spots of pure white to still remain in order to add a little variation and texture to the vehicle's surface. To do this, I took some white paint and a rounded brush. I dipped the brush into the paint and wiped it onto my wet palette to help work the paint through the dense bristles. This brush was then applied to the tank surface in a stippling motion. I focused on a few panels and this left behind a rough and uneven patches of white, helping to create the desired variation. Certain areas of the tank would experience more wear and tear than others. As such, these parts would have the original olive drab visible beneath them. These details were represented by painting rough highlights along the hard edges of the tank using US olive drab. By keeping things broken and uneven here, it helped to add the illusion that the paint had been made visible over a period of time, steadily worn away bit by bit. To paint the canvas covering around the mantle of the tank, I began by creating a dark brown mixture from flat earth and black. This was used to base coat the material, applying a couple of layers to ensure a good, solid base coat was created. I then used some flat earth on its own. This was painted over the canvas, but I left the darker brown visible within the recesses to help bring out some of those details. Finally, a highlight was created by mixing some Iraqi sand into the flat earth. Fine lines of this were painted onto some of the sharper edges to help create some strong definition between the darkest recesses and the lighter raised details. I then used some chocolate brown to paint the tracks of the tank. By using brown here, it created the appearance of rusted and mudded tracks that I will build upon later on. I also use this paint to paint some of the handles of the stowed equipment. Following this, black ray was used to base coat the pintle mounted 50 cal, the rubber road wheels and some of the stowage equipment. In addition to this, I added some soot marks to the vents and the muzzle brake. I used a similar stippling and dry brushing technique that I had used earlier when applying the white. Finally, I heavily watered down the black grey, creating a wash, much like I had done earlier. This wash was then directly targeted into the recesses between the armour panels. By darkening these down, it helps to create contrast between the recesses and the raised details, helping to add depth to the model. The next step saw me mixing together some chocolate brown and black to create a dark brown paint that I could use for some mud splatters. This mixture was then dry brushed and stippled onto and around the tracks. To finish off the model, I used a rough edge height of oily steel over the pintle mounted weapon and stowed equipment that I painted earlier with black grey. In addition to this, I also ran my brush over the tracks so that I picked up the raised details. This created the effect of metal that had been scratched and worn down and with that, the model was done. It just required a blast of matte varnish to seal things in, which left me with the following. And here we have the completed M18 Hellcat that was painted in a winterized scheme. 
Now, while I focus on just one type of tank in this video, you can apply the same paint and techniques to your other US vehicles. Additionally, with a little modification to the paints used, you could also use this to tackle German vehicles too. I'll include all the paints used in this guide in the description below, along with some affiliate links. So if you're looking to try out some of these things for yourself while supporting me in the process, I would be extremely grateful. Speaking of which, let me just say a huge thank you to my ever generous supporters. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hart, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Dakota the Destroyer, Jake, Jeremy Kaup, Jesse Smith, Casper Lindbergh, Lyconian Primark, Merrick, Mr. Grimm, Sweatsman, and Tim. So a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliate links, then it is the kind-hearted people such as yourselves that allow me to fund the tools and paints required to create these videos for you. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.